roads have a whole variety of potential impacts on wildlife, noise, light, air pollution, chemical pollution, collisions. So I wanted to look at what all of those impacts together might mean for bird populations. So for almost 20,000 sites around Britain, we calculated road exposure as you know, exposure of each site to roads using the location of all roads within a five kilometre radius. And now in this new paper, which is out this month, you've been looking at this road exposure, so everything to do with roads on British birds. And what, what have you found? Our findings are quite striking and quite concerning. We analysed populations of 75 bird species at each of these sites, you know, almost 20,000 sites across the whole of Great Britain and found that for 58 of these, so 77%, their abundance significantly varied with road exposure. So as road exposure increases, we see you know, changes in their abundance. And of these 58, just over half, so 57%, showed declines in abundance around roads and the rest, interestingly, showed increases in abundance. Well, that is a fascinating result in itself, the fact that half of them are going down and half of them are going up. Give us some examples of the species that you're actually looking at and, you know, who's benefiting and who's suffering as a result of road exposure? We found that the species that are in lower abundance around roads tend to be those that are nationally rarer, so they have smaller populations across the country. For example, yellow wagtails and green woodpeckers would be two. And those found in higher abundance were those that are more common, such as blackbirds and wood pigeons and house sparrows. And we also found that smaller bodied and migratory birds, for example, chiffchaffs, were more likely to be negatively associated with roads. And, and presumably this is the decline of low abundance birds that is accounted for, not just by the fact that they're low abundant, but they're relatively low abundant as a result of road exposure. Yeah. So if we compare their abundance you know, close to roads with sites further away from roads, we see relatively lower abundance of these species that are already more rare nationally. And in the paper, you point out that this is a correlative effect, not necessarily causative. Just talk about that for a minute. Yeah. So what we have done is looked at, you know, where are the roads, where are the birds and are there patterns here? Which, yes, there are. But it would need further work to prove a causal link. So are the changes in bird populations directly because of the roads. So what we can show here is that bird abundances do differ around roads, but you'd need more work to really prove that that is a cause. So for example, if you were to do some research around areas where roads have closed or opened or where traffic levels have varied more or less, then you could start to say more that this is clearly causal. But some of that work has been done in other places around the world. There have been other studies that have done that sort of work. So we can be fairly confident that roads do have an effect on wildlife and birds. And that is most likely what's coming through in our research as well. Right. But it's not necessarily negative overall. It's negative for some groups of birds and not others. Can you just unpick some of the numbers for us? How many species of British birds did you, you actually look at? So we looked at 75 species and found 77% change significantly abundance with just over half showing declines in abundance and the rest showing increases in abundance. So two examples, uh, one species that we find in increased abundance around road is bullfinches and we find their abundance was around 23% higher next to a road than in an area far away from roads. Conversely, meadow pipit was a species that was found in reduced abundance near roads and its abundance was around about 21% lower next to a road compared to away from a road. So can you actually give us some insight or speculate on why roads can be both negative and beneficial to different bird species? One of the most important factors we believe, particularly for birds, is the noise. So you'll know from walking alongside a busy road, it's extremely loud and this noise travels a long way. You have to go quite far from a road to not be able to hear it. For birds, this noise disrupts their communication and their ability to defend territories, attract mates, communicate with their own offspring. And it also reduces their ability to detect prey or predators, which results in them having to be more vigilant. So, you know, they're looking around more, which decreases their ability to then feed. So coming back to our results, the birds that are found in lower abundance around roads, this could be because their survival or breeding success is actually reduced around roads. Or it could be that they are choosing to avoid areas around roads because they can't tolerate the disturbance. And that these species tend to be nationally rarer could mean that roads directly affect their populations, or it could be that they have a reduced ability 
to adapt to humans in general, which has led to them being both in reduced abundance and also leads them to avoid roads. Birds that are found in higher abundance of railroads, however, it may be that they directly benefit from the road. The roads produce grit, heat, uh, food in the form of roadkill and, and perches in the form of power lines and fences that tend to run alongside roads. However, it's more likely, I think, that they are probably attracted to the roadside to use the habitat. So we have very few areas of you know, trees, shrubs, hedgerows in Britain, and much of this is alongside roads. So species that can tolerate the disturbance of roads, it would make sense if they're attracted to this habitat. And they may also benefit from the reduced competition due to the lack of rarer species. Importantly, these species may then still suffer the impacts of roads. You know, we know that blackbirds and house sparrows, for example, have high rates of roadkill. But it would appear that overall, they're better able to exist near roads than rarer species. And, and we know that the density of roads in the UK is incredibly high. Does the size of the roads or the volume of traffic have an effect on the birds? Yeah, so we have around 246,000 miles of roads in Britain. And about... 87% of these are minor roads, so country roads, B roads and C roads. But the rest are major roads, so A roads and motorways, which have a much higher volume of traffic. They're wider, they're noisier. And I did a sub-analysis looking at how some bird species vary around these roads and found that there were far more negative associations. So 81% of species were negatively associated with major road exposure which suggests that even for those species that can tolerate the disturbance of being around minor roads, there are thresholds of disturbance beyond which the benefits of being around a road are outweighed by the, the costs. Mm, and that density must have a significant effect on the distance, the, the effect of the road, how far it can spread, because there isn't that much territory in this country which is a long way from a road. No, we have very few areas, unfortunately, that are far away from roads. And strikingly, we found for the species showing negative associations with roads, this effect was detectable up to an average of 700 metres from a road. If we look at the whole of Great Britain, over 70% is within 700 metres of a road. In addition, if we look at protected areas, so triple SIs and nature reserves, over 40% of the total area of them is also within 700 metres of a road. And, and the triple SI being a site of special scientific interest. Scientific interest. OK, yeah. now, what do you think is happening here? Because this looks like selection towards common bird species and away from rare and small ones. What, what, do, we, what do you think is going on? So, yeah, so it would seem that roads are disproportionately disadvantaging species that are already rare and perhaps benefiting more common species. This may be because the species that are already rare nationally are, are rare because they cannot tolerate human disturbance that well, as where the species that are doing better, so pigeons, for example, blackbirds, they are perhaps doing better because they can cope more with human disturbance and the changes that we have caused around the country. So that roads may be benefiting some species at the expense of others, maybe leading to what we call simplification of bird communities. So just like in cities, when we see some species like jackdaws and pigeons everywhere, but far fewer unusual birds, perhaps roads are having a similar effect. And this has also been identified as a response to climate change. And there's some evidence to suggest that warming environments benefit already common species at the expense of others. And just to go back to the beginning, you were talking about how this is road exposure, not just noise. But how much of this do you think is down to noise itself? From other studies that have been done around the world, I would expect that a lot of what we're seeing is responses to noise, particularly given the distances from roads at which we're detecting these possible effects. Collisions do have impacts on some species, so buzzards, barn owls, they can suffer quite high rates of collisions. But for most bird species, it's more likely to be the noise that's having an impact. And in my mind, it's the noise that we should be looking to tackle when we think about mitigation of roads. So how would we do that? What sort of action could be taken to mitigate against well, the declining bird populations and also noise that's generated by roads. So there are quite a few things that can be done. One example is to change the road surface slightly. Obviously, there's a plan in the UK to switch to electric vehicles. 
and this will reduce the noise coming from vehicle engines. But actually, particular high speeds, most of the noise coming from cars is from the interaction between tyres and the road surface. It's not from the engine. So by changing the road surface slightly, for example, using a smaller aggregate material or adding rubber to the road surface, that can reduce the noise quite significantly. Also, noise barriers can be used, but these have to be used carefully so as to not increase the fragmentation impacts of roads. So stopping you know, terrestrial species from crossing the roads. So they want to be done in combination with underpasses or bridges. Thick tree lines can be used to reduce the noise as well. But you know the two most important things really are reducing speed in some areas. So as soon as you reduce the speed, you reduce the sound. But biggest of all, we just need fewer vehicles on the roads and more public transport. That's the number one method of mitigation. Sophia Cook from Cambridge University, whose PhD Viva is in four days' time, if you're listening live. So good luck to Sophia. Though, given the quality of her research, she's been on Inside Science twice now. I'm pretty sure she's going to be Dr Sophia Cook by this time next week.